Good day everyone! Welcome to another episode of Learn Math with Doc Gilma. Are you ready class for the next lesson? So if you're ready, just sit back, relax, and listen carefully to the topic to be discussed for today. Alright class, let's begin! The topic I will be discussing for today's lesson is all about some of the measures of interior angles of polygons. Consider the following polygons. We have here vertex A, vertex B, and vertex C for the given triangle. Vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, vertex D for the given quadrilateral. Vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, vertex D, vertex E for the given pentagon. Vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, vertex D, vertex E, vertex F for the given hexagon. Let's recall class. A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth and so on are all consecutive vertices depending on the number of sides of the given polygon. As you can see, in the given triangle, we have three vertices. So the consecutive vertices here are A, B, and C. For the quadrilateral, we have A, B, C, and D. For the pentagon, we have A, B, C, D, and E. For the hexagon, we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are all consecutive vertices. We also have the segment joining two non-consecutive vertices. It is simply called A diagonal. If we are to join vertex A to vertex C, the segment joining vertex A and vertex C is what we call diagonal. Also, if you are to join vertex B and vertex D in the given quadrilateral, we also have another diagonal. As you can see, there are two diagonals for the quadrilateral. For the given pentagon, if you are to join vertex A and vertex C, we have one diagonal. Vertex A and vertex D, we have another diagonal. Vertex C and vertex E, again we have one diagonal. Vertex B and vertex D, we have another diagonal. Vertex B and vertex E is again another diagonal. As you can see, in the given pentagon, there are five diagonals that are formed. For the given hexagon, if you are to join vertex A and vertex C, we have one diagonal. Vertex F and D, we have another diagonal. Vertex A and D, we have again another diagonal. Vertex B and E, we have another diagonal. Vertex B and F, we have again another diagonal. Vertex B and D is another diagonal. Vertex A and E is another diagonal. And Vertex C and E is another diagonal. Joining vertex C and F is another diagonal. How many diagonals are formed in the given hexagon? Yes, there are actually nine diagonals that are formed in the given hexagon. How about if there are seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so forth and so on. 
Can you possibly determine the number of diagonals that are formed in the given polygon? Yes, it is possible using this given formula. We have actually D is equal to N times N minus 3 quantity all over 2. Supposing we have a heptagon. Take note, heptagon have seven sides. So from here, substituting the number of sides in the given formula, we have 7 times 7 minus 3 all over 2. It is simply equal to 7 times 4 all over 2, which is just equal to 14. The number of diagonals for a heptagon is 14. Consider the given table here. We have number of sides, number of diagonals from a fixed vertex. For the second column, the number of triangles formed by the diagonals drawn from a fixed vertex. For the third column, and the sum of the interior angles for the fourth column. For a triangle wherein n is equal to 3, we have 0 diagonal. For a quadrilateral where n is equal to 4, we have 2 diagonals. For a pentagon wherein n is equal to 5, we have 5 diagonals. For a hexagon, we have nine diagonals. Using this formula, D is equal to N times N minus 3 over 2. We have determined the number of diagonals formed by a heptagon by just substituting the value of N, which is the number of sides in the given formula. So we have D is equal to 14. Let's have the octagon, where in octagon have eight sides, right? Using the same formula, substitute n, which is equal to eight. So we have eight times eight minus three all over two. We have eight times five, which is 40, divided by two is simply equal to 20. The number of diagonals formed for an octagon is 20. Okay, take note of that. How about for n-gon? For n-gon, we have this formula. D is just equal to n times n minus 3 all over 2. So take note of that. Consider again the following polygons here. With the given vertices of a triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, and hexagon. Now let's consider one diagonal for the quadrilateral. Okay? So as you can see, we can be able to determine the number of triangles that are formed. Yes, there are two triangles for a quadrilateral. How about for a pentagon? As you can see, there are three triangles that are formed. How about for a hexagon? As you can see, there are four triangles that are formed in the given hexagon. Using this formula, wherein t is equal to n minus 2, we can be able to determine the number of triangles that are formed in any polygon, where n is the number of sides of the given polygon. 
Uh, let's have an example. Using this formula, t is equal to n minus 2. For instance, we have here a triangle wherein n is equal to 3. Just substitute, we have 3 minus 2. So therefore, t is equal to 1. Okay? Similarly, if n is equal to 4, just substitute, t is equal to 4 minus 2. So we have t is just equal to 2. There are two triangles formed for a quadric lateral. Similarly, if n is equal to 5, t is simply equal to 3. 5 minus 2 is just equal to 3. Consider the number of sides, which is equal to 6. So we have here t is equal to n minus 2, so we have 6 minus 2. So therefore, the number of triangles formed is simply equal to 4. For a heptagon, wherein a heptagon have 7 sides, we have 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. For an octagon, wherein an octagon have 8 sides, we have 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. For the n gon, we simply have the formula, which is n minus 2. So take note of that. This time, let's consider the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. Consider the following polygons here. For the triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, and hexagon. And the consecutive vertices, we have the segment joining two non-consecutive vertices, is what we call a diagonal. If we are to consider the number of triangles formed based from the diagonal of a polygon, we can actually determine the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon. For a triangle, we have actually three angles here. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So therefore, for a quadrilateral, since we have two triangles formed by a diagonal, the sum of the measures of the interior angles is 360. For a pentagon, we have 540 since there are three triangles formed. The same is true with a hexagon. Since there are four triangles formed, the sum of the interior angles is 720 degrees. Wherein we have the following formula. S is just equal to the quantity N minus 2 times 180 degrees. Now, let's consider the given table a while back. This time, we're going to fill in the four columns for the sum of the interior angles. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. For a quadrilateral, we have 360 degrees. For a pentagon, we have 540 degrees. And for a hexagon, using this given formula, wherein S is just equal to N minus 2 times 180, we have here 6 minus 2 times 180 degrees. So we have 4 times 180 degrees is just equal to 720 degrees. For n is equal to 7, we have here s is equal to 7 minus 2 times 180 degrees. So we have s is just equal to 5 times 180 degrees, which is equal to 900 degrees. For n is equal to 8, using the formula n minus 2 quantity times 180 degrees, 
we have 8 minus 2 quantity times 180 degrees which is 6 times 180 degrees S is simply equal to 1080 degrees as you can see using the formula we can be able to determine the sum of the interior angles of a polygon for n gon we simply have the formula S is just equal to the quantity n minus 2 times 180 degrees so take note of that before we end our discussion for today let me first share to you a simple passage from the Bible coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 don't fear because I am with you don't be afraid for I am your God, I will strengthen you, I will surely help you, I will hold you with my righteous strong hand. Take note class, skills are developed through constant correct practice and there will always be a room for improvement. That's all for today. See you in the next lesson. Stand by for more lessons, stay safe everyone, and may God bless us all.